What is up guys, Rekakis here, and today we have another Anthem update, discussing the latest news and information on Bioware's new game. And so, let's get started. Now, right off the bat, let's talk about the PC version. Anthem is reported to be for pretty much every of the main consoles. Nintendo consoles, no one quite knows, probably not going to be on the Switch, at least at launch, but gonna be on the PlayStation 4, gonna be on the Xbox, and gonna be on the PC. Now, if you are a PC player, and there's a lot of them, that's somewhat concerning to you. Because a lot of games that are on consoles and PC, the PC version is somewhat of a port, and it's lacking so many of the features PC players are looking for, like a field of view slider. So, someone actually asked this question on the Reddit, and our boy, Brennan Holmes, who is the technical design director at Bioware, was there to answer it. So the question states, as of late, it seems a lot of games that are in development for both console and PC seem to be having one platform worked on first more than the other, so I was curious if Anthem would be scheduled to ship on all platforms when released. Great question there. And the response from Bioware was, when we're developing, we generally pick a primary platform that most people will focus on. And usually you want it to be the most restrictive platform, a console, just to make sure they're fully supported. We try to ensure that there's a good mix of dev kits, so some folks are using Xbox One dev kits, others are using PS4s. Development on PC sort of just happens naturally with the way the engine works. I hope that answers your question. Now, someone did get in there and also asked, please do not make it a PC port with lousy KBM support and bad PC optimization. Again, that's that main PC concern. I do not want to pick on your words, but PC sort of happens doesn't sound well. And I think that's a legitimate concern. Bioware responded to that saying, let me put it another way then. Everyone is constantly developing on the PC platform, to which the guy responded, thanks, uh, I, you know, I was just worried about that. And Bioware says, no worries, completely understand the concern. So I would take this as completely medium news if you are a PC fan. It's looking that Bioware is not going to let Anthem just be a crappy PC port with no optimization, with no features, and absolutely nothing that PC players want. And that has happened to AAA games, even Call of Duties have lacked huge PC features. But the fact that Bioware is going in answering this question saying everyone's developing on the PC constantly as we're making this game, that is good news. Now, the fact that they didn't say, hey, we're focusing on PC, it's going to be amazing, just you wait, means that it's probably not going to have the most optimization and the most features that PC players may be looking for, but again, it should stray away from that crappy PC port that players are really concerned about. But moving on from there, we've got more information. And let's talk about what I think is a really cool topic, how the weapons work in Anthem. So someone asked the question, bullet mechanics question, are the rounds fired going to be hit scan like early Call of Duty or projectiles like Battlefield? Great question. Bioware responds, it depends on the weapon. Most are projectile based. Some of them move very quickly. Others are hit scan. So someone says, I'm kind of confused by that reply because I assume the majority of weapons will be like real world guns that shoot bullets. So you should have said most are projectile based and most of them move very quickly. The way you put it made it like only a few weapons are using normal bullets. Bioware responds to that saying, guns can be hit scan and can resolve on the impact of the shot immediately on the same frame we did this for Mass Effect 1 to 3, and most notably Call of Duty uses that system, and Destiny for that matter of fact. They can also be projectile based, which is more like the Battlefield games. In this case, you have a projectile that moves very quickly. There are advantages and disadvantages to both systems. What I was referring to in my post was more than just guns. For us, standard guns generally use very fast moving projectiles. An impact might be determined within a few frames. Non-standard guns and other types of weapons could use slower projectiles that you can actually see, hit scan, or other methods of detecting a hit. 
Now someone replies to that saying, I'm assuming by non-standard guns that are not hit scan, you're referring to rockets, mortars, grenades from launchers, any type of charged, slow moving energy weapons like fusion rifles from Destiny, Spartan laser from Halo, and that Titan killer one from Titanfall, standard rapid fire rifles, snipers, pistols, etc. Anything with conventional bullet isn't on that list. And Byro responds saying, yep, those are some good examples with a smiley face. All right, so big thread there, but what actual information does it contain? Well, the main takeaway here is that Anthem is going to use projectile based weapons like Battlefield most of the time. This is very good news. Why? Well, if you've ever played a Battlefield game, you'll know, especially, you know, Battlefield 4, I think that was balanced very well, that the weapon system uses bullet velocity to make guns unique and to balance their weapons and to differentiate their weapons between each other. SMGs have a really slow bullet velocity and they definitely feel like it. You're gonna have to literally lead your shots even out to medium range. And you have whole categories of weapons like sniper rifles where having a high bullet velocity is a huge asset of that weapon. And it's a good factor in choosing a weapon you want to use. Bringing this into Anthem is just going to give us more diversity, more options in terms of balance, and generally just make it a better game, I believe. But when I say that, I'm just referring to traditional modern day weapons shooting traditional bullets. Anthem is a totally fictional game, and although it does have those traditional bullet based weapons, it can also have lasers and plasma guns and some crazy stuff and it's very much hinted in this thread by Bioware that, hey, that person is onto something with the slow moving energy weapons like plasma weapons and other slow moving projectiles that this sort of engine would allow. And I mentioned the engine because Anthem is being built on Frostbite, which is the same engine as Battlefield, hence the projectile based weapon system. Now, moving on from there, let's talk about some really interesting information about Anthem's setting. This is actually a huge point of contention and confusion when it comes to Anthem. Where is this game based? Is it on a future Earth? Is it still based in our solar system? Perhaps a colonized planet by humanity? Is it completely made up? How many planets are there? Like, can you travel to different planets? These are all very good questions. Well, if you learned last time when we did an Anthem update, Bioware confirmed that the place Anthem takes place is not an Earth. It's not a post-apocalyptic or changed Earth in any way. It is a completely different planet. But again, is it going to be more of a space opera type of game, somewhat like Destiny, where you can travel from planet to planet? Well, someone asked a bunch of different questions. Bioware picked three to answer, so I'm just going to go over those three. The first one, how did we get to this world and why are we here? Great question. And then Bioware responds, maybe we've always been here. Okay, that right there is really interesting. Now, if, if you saw that without the context of the last Anthem update, you'd think, oh my gosh, it's Earth. But saying that and knowing that's not Earth, it means that this is a completely fictional time frame. Like this isn't a colonized planet that humanity colonized. This is completely fictional and you know, humanity or whoever these beings are in this game started from a fictional origin point. And that's very important when it comes to the storyline and what's going on here. Now, the next question is, will there be different planets, maybe as DLC or in the main game? The response here is we're a bit more terrestrial. So that again is actually a very important piece of information that this planet that is where Anthem takes place it's all about this planet. We're not going to be having DLCs going to other planets. And I think that information kind of changes the perspective on Anthem quite a bit. It, it kind of does for me. I was almost expecting this to be this new, more of a space opera type of game where we would have DLC planets and spaceships and stuff, but having everything based on that one planet just means that DLCs will take place expanding the original explorable zone again on this original planet. And I think that's actually really, really interesting. And it gives me sort of vibes of Borderlands, everything taking place on, on Pandora, even though more things exist outside of Pandora. Of course, aside from the moon in pre-sequel, but I digress. 
And the last question is, will we be having a central hub in space? And that the place in the video is only an outpost. Bioware responds, the area you see in the video is the fort. It's the focal point for a lot of what you do. As I mentioned above, think more science fantasy, less space opera. And again, I feel like knowing that information is going to change a lot of people's overall perspective on what they think Anthem is going to be. Now, moving on, let's talk about some loot and leveling information. Someone asked the question, would you want an MMO style weapon system that focuses more on stats or would you rather have a progression based system that levels up the weapon and the armor as you use it? Now Bioware responds, one advantage to having a more static model is that it's a lot easier to entice players into different styles of gameplay. You find something new, it's more powerful than what you have, you're likely to give it a go. Alternatively, with things that grow in power over time and usage, you tend to get a lot more attached to the items you have. They start to form a part of the identity of your character. A lot of it depends on what the progression goals are with the given system. Currently, we're doing both styles for different areas of progression. So really interesting there. Now, when it's referred to as static, I don't think it's referring to as a static like roll, like weapon roll or armor roll like in Destiny 2, which has been less than optimal. I think it's just referring to a weapon that once you get it, you cannot change it. And this is going to be even a randomly spawning weapon like in Borderlands or in Destiny 1. What you get is what you get. And again, with this system, um, Brennan Holmes is totally right there. You get something sweet, you're gonna try it out. Like when you got the Genesis chain in Destiny 1, you're gonna try that out because it's very different and it's likely better than any of the other auto rifles you have, frankly. So that is the advantage to that system. But again, that other system of using that weapon, constantly leveling it up, unlocking new things, being able to move that weapon forward, that is somewhat like what the division is doing with the optimization station where you can take a weapon and optimize it to increase its power essentially increase the amount of damage it does and and so on in fact speaking of the division it's a good example of a game that like brennan holmes describes with anthem does somewhat do both you have static weapons and armor as you get them you can't really alter them as you level up. You can't level them up by using them, but you can change them. You can change their attributes. You can bring them forward with resources. Now, when we're talking about Anthem doing both of these methods, I would assume that the easiest way to interpret this is that weapons are the static items. They have random rolls like we saw within the gameplay. It looks like you get this weapon. It has a bunch of different stats on it. And again, that's going to encourage you to use a bunch of different things as you acquire them. But as for the progression system, that may be referring to the suit of your character and the abilities that that suit holds. Like we saw the missile salvo ability, it would make sense that as you use this ability, you level it up and unlock perks for that ability. This would be somewhat similar to, again, a Borderlands style game. But moving on, the last thing we're going to cover is the question of, would it be wrong to describe this game at a high level as Warframe meets Monster Hunter World? Now, Bioware does respond. That's definitely a way of describing it. That's what we refer to as the Razor. The problem with the Razor is, good ones are really hard to come up with, and people will always interpret them differently depending on their experiences. If you love Monster Hunter, you'll view that as a good thing. If you hate it, you'll view it as a bad thing, of course. So you usually need supporting material to really help drive it home. There are elements in your razor that fit, but it really depends on exactly what you mean and on the next level of detail. I think that we have a fairly good way of describing the IP and the game. Unfortunately, I don't think we can talk about it quite yet. And I want to end on that note because I think it's a very important thing to keep in mind. You know, we're covering as much information as we can here on the channel. And I think it's great for people who are interested in this game. Like knowing is very important. Knowing if the details of the game are something you're going to want to enjoy and play or something that you may want to, you know, miss. But no one really knows exactly what this game is going to be all about. And I still see comments of people saying EA trash game 
don't buy. Like, no, not gonna buy, it's made by EA. That's just as silly, in my opinion, as saying, Bioware made Mass Effect 1 to 3, it's going to be a perfect game, I'm buying it 100% a pre-order 10 copies, right? We don't know, there's a bunch of unknowns, there's a bunch of different ways we can describe this game, and something like Anthem, and from what we've seen, this could be something very unique that doesn't have a lot of parallels within the gaming set landscape right now. And therefore, it's going to be very hard to determine if this game is for you. And again, therefore, information is what you need to make that decision. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Anthem content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.